Hello and welcome back to video four of this mini video series about reversing type two diabetes and also prediabetes. In video one, we looked at the root causes of these conditions. Simply put, you have to have insulin resistance and chronic inflammation for type two to develop in your body. And you're gonna be on the way to developing insulin resistance if you're pre-diabetic. You do not want this to happen. A few stats for you, around 30.3 million people in America have diabetes, and around 90 to 95% of those people have type two diabetes, which is a condition which is completely avoidable and 100% reversible through nutrition and lifestyle changes. There is no need for any medications for type two diabetes. If you do use them, very short term only. You really want to be reversing this completely naturally because medications never tackle the root cause or the diabetes itself. They target the blood sugars and that's it. So in day one, we looked at insulin resistance and chronic inflammation and a few stats. So day two, we looked into the role of epigenetics. It doesn't really matter whether you come from a whole family of diabetes sufferers. Epigenetics means you can override a genetic predisposition to getting anything by the choices that you make, the food you eat, how much you move and work out your body, and also how much you manage emotions like stress and trauma from the past. So yesterday, we looked more into blood sugars, the role of different foods on the impact of your blood sugars. If you have type two diabetes or prediabetes, you will probably be familiar with the term blood sugars. Simply put, when you consume any kind of food, your blood sugars change. When you consume very high glycemic foods, your blood sugars spike. So this might be sugar or high glycemic foods like wheat and potatoes or pasta or rice. Your blood sugars spike very sharply. So we talked about reducing intake of such to reduce the blood sugars. Now the next point about wheat, which we looked at yesterday, is about its inflammatory effect in the gut. So today, we're going to be looking at the inflammatory effect of wheat in your gut. Today, the hybridized, the modern hybridized wheat grain has been so tampered with by man that it's one of the most inflammatory culprits that we have, or rather, invisible inflammatory culprits that we have. I say invisible because it's just not obvious. There are some things in our food supply or food supply which are, when you look at them, you think, of course that causes inflammation. I mean, inflammation in its simplest terms is your body's immune system under attack. Your immune system looks at something and it does not recognize it, and it reacts to go into defense. So anything that goes into your body that your body does not recognize will trigger an inflammatory response. Gluten, one of the most harmful components of wheat, has actually been dubbed a gut poison because it can tear the gut lining and it creates inflammation in the body. It's a pretty harmful thing, a very harmful thing. And not only the gluten of wheat is inflammatory, but the lectins and the phytates, these have been called anti-nutrients because they can bond to nutrients and they prevent the absorption of minerals into your gut. We absorb all of our nutrients, our micronutrients, our vitamins and minerals and our macronutrients in our gut. Everything happens in our gut. And around 70% of the immune system is in the gut. So when your gut is inflamed because you're eating inflammatory foods like gluten, then not only are you gonna be spiking your blood sugars all the time and cause weight gain because you're spiking insulin all the time, your fat storing hormone looked at the last few days, but you're causing the inflammatory effect in your body as well. So you take out the inflammatory things and your body can start to heal. Your immune system gets stronger. Did you know you can't have a strong immune system if you're inflamed? The two go, do, do not go hand in hand. You can't have chronic inflammation and a strong immune system. It's impossible. So you really wanna be getting rid of inflammation in the body. And there's a blood test you can take right now to see your levels of inflammation in your body, one of which is C-reactive protein. So you take out the wheat because it's this harmful intruder. And again, looked at yesterday, there used to be these meter and a half long crops. Now they're about a, a foot tall. And they, the idea is they yield more in less time. Great for farmers, great for the agricultural industry, not so good for your health. So that's one of the harmful inflammatory culprits to remove. Another one is dairy, more specifically cow's milk. 
The clue about why cow's milk is inflammatory should really be in the title. It's cow's milk. It's specifically designed for baby cows to grow fast, to give them this massive boost in life, to give them the right nutrients. So micronutrients, again, in vitamins and minerals, macronutrients, your carbs, your proteins, your fats, for baby cows to grow fast, and also hormones and amino acids, hormones for baby cows to grow fast. Really, that's all we need to say. It's inflammatory, so take that out of your diet now. You might be able to start reintroducing bits later on, but really it's not a good idea because it's not designed for humans. So those are two main inflammatory culprits. Oh, another thing about dairy is around 70% of the Western world, or the world in fact, is lactose intolerant. Lactose is the sugar found in cow's milk, and the reason they are lactose intolerant, meaning they can't break it down, is because most people no longer have the enzyme called lactase to break down the sugar, the lactose, in the cow's milk. Why? Well, when humans stop breastfeeding from their mother's breast, breast, remember to get the right mammal, it's not an udder, we stop breastfeeding, we actually lose the enzyme. It's a, it's a normal thing to happen with humans is to lose the enzyme because we no longer need it. We're no longer feeding off our mother's breast, so we no longer need that enzyme. So that's why around 70% of the population can't actually break it down, and it doesn't have to be an acute reaction. You don't have severe stomach cramps. You can be lactose intolerant in other ways. It can show up in skin conditions. I mean, inflammation itself is the root of skin conditions, like eczema and psoriasis and acne and dermatitis. But there's, it can show up in other more subtle ways. And until you just take it out of your life, that's when you start to realize how harmful these things can actually be in your body. So take those two things out. Take out wheat and take out dairy, particularly the milk, for the next you know, week, 28 days, 30 days, two months. See how fast you start to feel better. When you get rid of inflammation in your body, not only are you going to burn fat very fast because inflammation causes you to retain more as well and all your hormones go out of balance. Uh, so you're gonna not only experience a better feeling in terms of losing all the, the excess body fat, but you're gonna be able to start to think more clearly. Your, your brain mental clarity goes up, your focus goes up, your depression sinks. Did you know that inflammation is one of the main causes of depression? Inflammation of the brain, wheat, can be one of the ma main culprits for inflammation of the brain and depression. It's crazy. There's a brilliant book which is called Grain Brain by David, Dr. David Perlmutter, and he talks about these different grains that cause us neurodegenerative decline. There's a strong link between diabetes and neurodegenerative decline, like Parkinson's disease and Alzheimer's. Very, very strong link. So that's why type three diabetes, or rather Alzheimer's, has been dubbed type three diabetes. Seriously, you wanna be getting rid of, imp of inflammation, you wanna be getting rid of type two diabetes, you wanna be reversing it completely naturally. Remember, drugs do not treat the root cause, they do not treat the condition, they just mask the symptoms and enable you to manage things. So you wanna be reversing it. So tomorrow, we're gonna to be talking about putting your body into a more efficient mode for burning fat, and for really creating energy in your body. Most of us are sugar burners. We get most of our energy from sugar, from glucose, broken down from high glycemic carbohydrates and vegetables, but most vegetables are very, very low in carbohydrates. Most of us are getting fueled from carbohydrates from the likes of wheat, and so breads, pastas, breakfast cereals and stuff. You don't have to get energy from glucose. You can get your energy from another source, which we're going to be looking at tomorrow. I hope you found that useful. Remember, you want to be getting rid of inflammation, you want to be getting insulin sensitive again, and you want to be reverting type 2 diabetes completely naturally. You have the power to do this. The beauty about all of this is you have the power to heal your own body. It's got nothing to do with me. This is about you healing your body. So I hope you found that useful. Look out for the video tomorrow, and I'm excited to share with you some more cool ways of reversing type 2 diabetes and pre-diabetes. Please like and share with anyone you know this will benefit. Thank you for watching.